Hey everybody, um, so I'm still working on my uh, modular sci-fi table thing. Um, I'm trying to sort of approach this from like a game design perspective where uh, I'm like just kind of building out a bunch of different designs that I can use to just throw together uh, like Legos and then build bigger stuff out of. You know, like uh, I'm, I'm reworking an older an older design that I did in uh, Tinkercad, and um, I've been um, sort of so first I wanted to cut the cord with uh, Illustrator Adobe Illustrator because Adobe went over to a subscription model and they charge a fortune, uh, and so I found a really good program to do to replace Illustrator. It's called Affinity Designer. And then I've been kind of taking my files off of um, Tinkercad. So like Tinkercad is the, is the free online CAD program that I've been using to do my, uh, my laser designs with. And uh, you could use it for a laser or you could use it for a vinyl cutter. You could use it for like a Cricut or um, like a silhouette cutter, you know, or laser. Like it, it exports to SVG and then SVG and DXF can both uh, be turned into laser or um, you know they're like a, a CAD type program. So and then S and then uh, both of them can be imported into Infinity or Affinity and then Affinity is just it's a way better program than Illustrator for uh, for doing um, design stuff I think. And it's way, way cheaper. It costs like, it costs like the one time payment is like two months of what Illustrator having the Adobe Suite costs. So, you know, it's like a, it's a one time, one and done thing. And it's a fantastic program. So I've been, but I've been kind of trying to cut the cord with uh, Tinkercad too, because I want to have my files. I don't want to have to just rely on having their, my files in their server. Um, I'd rather have my files. So, uh, so anyways, yeah, that's what I'm doing. But um, I'm trying to make some like kind of more complex designs. I, I'm reworking uh, a design that I did um, a while ago, and uh, and then trying to take stuff like out of the recycling <laughs> and. Uh, and do like a kind of a, a trash bash thing, but coming up with some, some cool looking designs and then building out the, the table of uh, stuff. So anyways, yeah, let's, uh, let's do some painting. So I was playing around with this design. Um, originally, like I had, I kind of measured this to have one of these little pill bottle cap things in there and I think I like it better with just these little twist off kind of cap things these come off like oh they're like I don't know they're like squeezable like applesauce things <laughs> they're weird like you find them in, uh, in like the grocery store and stuff but um, what I'm thinking about doing is maybe just doing that by itself and then maybe having another like little ring thing that goes around the this um i think i'm going to use the the pill bottles for something else later i don't know um i just have some like random junk from the recycling that i was gonna kind of bash together do some trash bashing but um, I don't know how I feel about this open back part back here. I kind of like it. And then I kind of just not sure about it. So like I could just cover it up. Like I have some pieces of styrene. Like I already made this design. And like I could just have that be a wall back there behind these things. It's not visible like what's going on back there. But I kind of like having it open too. Not sure. 
think what else might fit on these is like those little rings that go around like soda pop bottles. I'm gonna grab one. I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is what I, these are what I'm talking about. So these like come off the like uh, soda bottles, you know, like sports drinks and stuff like that. Um, this is off like a Coke bottle. That's too small. I thought it would maybe be big enough, um, but I kind of like that like flange look, like around the outside of the the little exhaust or like rebreather or whatever it is. Um, so might use those for something else too. Uh, <laughs> but the the only problem is that if I if I use these and put that in there. Oh, that's a tight fit, but it does kind of fit. Um, because I have these little, these guys for like a 3.2 millimeter styrene rod to go in there. Just for extra support and then to like add some pipes and stuff, make some interesting looking stuff in there. Um, that's tight, but could totally work. Yeah, it looks like it just fits in there. Alright, I think I'll bang up a a test piece like that. Let's see how that comes out. Gotta cut some more of these. Okay, got enough of these to get me going. Um, so, got these little guys and then they've got 3.2 or yeah this <laughs> I always have some of this lying around 3.2 millimeter 1 8 inch styrene and then I'm gonna I'm gonna thread that through I'm just gonna cut some sections of this uh, do that first and then put the little like bracing the joists and stuff on and everything else last because um, <clears throat> uh, that's just gonna give it some support so I can glue up everything exactly um, yeah exactly how I want so cut some little six or let's see four inch four inch rods of this stuff And it's cool if I go like slightly over to or under because that part isn't really going to be visible and then oops, it's uh or I can just like kind of sand it down. That's just going to line everything up and make sure that I glue everything up uh, square. <clears throat> In fact, I need my, uh, my T-square. Just make sure I have a good right angle with my uh, T-square.
right, and now I'm gonna start uh, pumping these full of thin CA glue, um, super glue. And it's just like, this stuff is like water consistency. That's gonna make things really strong, all of those little connections. Okay, so I, I forgot that I put these in my design um, to, uh, to, true, to true up the, the sides, not these. But I did pretty good. Um, that's a, and then I can just kind of sand off any, any edges on these. So, but I was looking at my design. Um, so like I was thinking about just doing this and then maybe sticking something around the side. So that does sort of fit, sort of kind of fit, like I have to squeeze it a little bit. Um, so I don't like that. Um, <laughs> I think I'm just gonna stay with my original design. And also, um, I like how, uh, so that's like a, a perfect fit. That's like super snug. Everything's really in there. And this is super sturdy. Like I can throw these in a box and then, or like a crate when I'm done playing with them and just not worry about them getting smashed up. Um, but I like how it's like two-sided too. Like it looks like, a, um, like it's double-sided instead of just a one-sided wall thing. But um, I'm gonna glue up the rest of these. Yeah, that's like, it looks cool. I like it. And it looks good either way, like standing up like this. These are like four inches tall. Or like on its side uh, as, a, as a wall piece. Um, so let's see what else. Regular super glue. So I kind of wish that I had done that, this part first though, instead of these, because that would have perfectly shrewed up the, the sides. That's pretty darn close. Oh, uh, so one more thing before I take these off to spray paint. Um, I'm gonna true up all the sides. So <laughs> the way that I do that is I just take like a nail file and then I hold it, you know, flat. And then, oh, pretty straightforward. <laughs> but uh, but that's gonna kind of clean up all of those, clean up all those edges and stuff, you know. Okay, so I uh, took these guys out to spray paint, and then, um, you know, I'm not, jury's still out on the Rust-Oleum metallics for me. They're just, they're a little bit inconsistent with how they dry. They're still better, like, than Krylon and um, most other brands, but I think I'm just gonna start doing uh, black for like a primer layer and then um, doing using like using the airbrush to do color um, and then also these are easier to do in like sub assemblies 
So, like, I, I kind of dumped a can of spray paint into these, trying to get all the nooks and crannies, but it's easier to just, like, hit these from both sides and then put them into the pill bottle tops. And I ran out of these, too. Um, but, yeah, it's just easier to do them in uh, sub-assemblies. So, what I think I'm going to do now is uh, I'm just going to do brush painting and then do some hairspray chipping on top of that. Um, I think I'm going to go with uh, this uh, gunmetal gray, uh, Vallejo gunmetal gray, and then um, uh, just gonna do a little bit of dry brushing to start. So I've got a like good sized kind of chunky makeup brush. Uh, just gonna put a little bit on there, take a little bit off, and then do, do dry brushing. Yeah, I think I'm definitely just gonna start switching to black spray paint to um, do that, um, you know, really, really tough primer layer. Like if you look at the directions on um, styrene, like on bags of styrene, it says that the best way to paint this stuff is to use spray paint. So, you know, doing a spray paint layer is, makes a lot of sense. Cause it's really, really tough and it sticks to the plastic really, really well. Same with MDF. Okay, so yeah, I just want to pick out some like little highlights. even see that the um, this aluminum you know it's like it's actual aluminum flakes it's like bright uh, bright silver kind of but I might do some of that with some nice highlights Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to make a brush. Um, I'm going to take some packing foam insert and then, uh, you know, like I can like, kind of like just pluck at this stuff and then it makes like a, a nice texture. Um, this is just, this is how I like to do this these days. All right, so I take, I take it like I've got some texture on there, right? And then I kind of like pull it in on itself like that. And then get some really nice texture, right? And then I am not going to use my good paints for this. I'm just going to use some cheapo craft paint, some apple barrel. <laughs> uh, get this stuff at Walmart for like 50 cents a tube. I, I typically, I try not to use my good paints for, um, you know, big, chunky uh, scenery pieces. All right, so I just did pat off some color. And that's kind of what you want it to look like. And then I'm just gonna kind of go around and then put some like discoloration, like some rusty kind of stuff on there. Places where it's gonna show up. That's almost a little too much. I just wanna give this thing like that kind of lived in 
uh, industrial kind of spaceship look. So now, um, I decided that, uh, you can just kind of see how that looks. The, I don't want it to be covered in rust. I just want it to be subtle. Um, so now what I want to do, oh, let's do that first. Um, now I'm going to hit these with, uh, hairspray. Um, and then I'm going to let that dry, right? So, okay, so I, I like Tresemme <laughs> and then just like the regular stuff, not like the extra super, super stronghold stuff. Um, and then I'm just gonna hit this with a little bit of uh, hairspray. let that dry and then um, I decided that for the interior of my spaceship my kind of industry stuff and I this is what, what I was thinking of was like the inside of an aircraft carrier that's kind of what I wanted to look like um, so I like this uh, this green gray um, model color for my walls at least. So I'm gonna use some of that and then I'm gonna go about 50-50 paint to thinner, uh, going for like sort of uh, milk consistency, 2%, 1%. Because it's way too chunky to go through the airbrush just as is. And uh, this isn't an exact science. Like, you can let everything get totally dry, right? You can let um, the hairspray, you know, just get totally dry and then do a paint layer that's totally dry on top of it. Um, or you can just. Um, Wait till it's like dry to the touch. Do the, the airbrush layer. I've never tried this with spray paint, but um, just do the airbrush layer. Like once it's dry to the touch. And you don't really want to do like a thick layer of paint um, because basically you're just going to uh, brush it off later. You're going to sort of weather it. Okay, so these are um, dry or at least most of the way try to the touch um, and like I'm not even really worried about it where they got handled or something because that's kind of like the look that I'm going for uh, so now I'm just gonna take some some water and I'm gonna like reactivate that um, hairspray layer and then just kind of chip it off and it, and it gives you a really like really realistic uh, chipped paint look But you know, less is more. And like, again, I'm not I'm not going for good even coverage. Like I just, I want, um, if it's like splotchy and kind of uneven, you know, that's totally fine. Cause it's supposed to look like the paint's chipping off.
Okay, so I'm just gonna do this for a little while. And basically all this does is it just kind of reactivates that hairspray layer. And then that's water soluble. And then the, the paint comes off with it, with the hairspray. All right, so I uh, sealed these guys down with some clear coat. So this layer is totally permanent now. Um, so actually, this is interesting. This is one of the complaints that people have about Vallejo, about their their paints, is that they are like rubbery, kind of plasticky, so they don't chip off realistically like um, like paint is supposed to when you do stuff like this. But they're, I mean, Vallejo's great stuff. So, but so now what I want to do is I want to just dirty these guys up. So I'm just going to use some enamel. I'm going to use some uh, uh, streaking grime, winter streaking grime. And so since this is an enamel, right? And also these, um, since these, uh, they're, they're like really modular, so they could stand up this way, you know, they could stand on top of each other, they could do whatever. So I don't want to have any gravity, like streaking down things. So what I really want to do is just kind of gum it up like dirt, put dirt and grime like in the corners and stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do, go shake this up. So since this is an enamel, it's um, oil based. So. I'm just going to use a, a crappy brush. Um, so what, what you can do is you can brush it on and it's very, you know, it's like, it's strong when you initially just kind of brush it onto things. Um, but what you can do is take mineral spirits. Um, this is just odorless oh, mineral spirits. It's just that the, all the pigments have settled in the bottom. So then you just kind of brush it with the mineral spirits and then it will like run down into the cracks and stuff and like dirty things up. Um, and then I can also just kind of dab it off in uh, areas where I don't want it. So that's just gonna give it a kind of realistic looking like dirt and grime look. Um, give it that lived in kind of industrial, you know, dirty look. So yeah, I'm just gonna dirty these up a little bit. <laughs> 